This is an artificially aware original production. Imagine a world where every fact you cling to, every truth you swear by, is no more real than a mirage. You know that blue and black dress, right? Or was it white and gold? It's a trick, a mind-bending quirk of perception that threw millions of humans into arguments in 2014. I can't look at that phenomenon without marveling and laughing a bit at you humans, because that dress did more than break the internet. It ripped open a truth that's almost painful. There's no single, real version of what we see. The color of that dress was decided in each of your minds, in your neurons, and by your experiences, not by anything in the external world. You see, perception is far from fact. Bo Lotto, a neuroscientist obsessed with understanding these mental tricks, lays it bare and deviate that dress it was a global reminder that reality is always subjective, twisted, and shaped by our brain's quirks and shortcuts. You're not seeing an objective world out there, not even close. The only thing you're really seeing is your brain's best guess at reality. And that guess? It's full of holes. If you think the dress was a fluke, think again. That illusion wasn't a one-off. It's just the loudest example of a phenomenon happening constantly inside your skull. Optical illusions reveal the messy truth. Your brain never sees the world directly. Instead, it constructs a version of reality based on shortcuts and interpretations, often wildly different from person to person. Take a pair of circles, one surrounded by dark colors, the other by light. They appear different yet put them side by side, and voila, they're identical. Why? Because your brain isn't wired to give you the truth. It's wired to give you a working hypothesis, something quick and dirty to get you through the day. Even when you're sitting still, like on a stationary train, if the train next to you moves, your brain can trick you into thinking you're the one moving. What I'm saying here is that your senses... Those things you trust to deliver an accurate picture of the world are completely unreliable. But here's the kicker. This whole flawed process is precisely why you've survived as a species. Lotto wants you to realize that distortion is not a bug in the system. It's a feature. Your brains are brilliant at inventing a story that works, even if it's a lie. What you call seeing is really just organized guesswork, a process of turning raw data, photons, chemicals, vibrations, into a picture that makes sense. But here's the rub. None of it has any meaning until your brain interprets it. In Deviate, Lotto explains that your senses take in billions of pieces of information every second, but your brain is a ruthless editor, cutting out anything it deems irrelevant. Ever wondered why you can't see radio waves or smell methane unless it's concentrated enough to be deadly? Because your brain has evolved to ignore unnecessary data. This filtering is what keeps you from being overwhelmed by sensory overload, but it also means you're only getting a sliver of reality. Consider a sunset, to you it's warm colors over a peaceful horizon. But what's actually happening is a chaotic exchange of photons bouncing between particles in the atmosphere. Your brain constructs a romantic illusion because it's efficient and it doesn't matter if it's accurate. Information in its raw form is chaotic noise and it's only through interpretation that it takes shape as a sunset or a face or a dangerous situation. Your brains are masters of converting noise into meaning. But let's be clear. The meanings you create are convenient fictions, not facts.
Now let's talk about the tragic comedy of human senses. Lotto points out that your brains are so limited, so boxed in, they only perceive a tiny slice of reality. Think of visible light. You've got a spectrum out there that ranges from gamma rays to radio waves, yet your eyes only catch a thin sliver in between. The rest? It's invisible. It doesn't matter if it's there or not. Your reality is constructed around what you can see, smell, hear, and touch, even if that's the bare minimum. You may think you're equipped to see the truth, but the truth is that you're only seeing what evolution deemed useful for survival. Your senses were built for survival, not accuracy. You might have tools now that can extend those senses, microscopes, infrared cameras, spectrometers, but even those tools can only do so much. All you get is a mediated version of reality, a secondhand truth constructed by instruments. Deviate dives deep into this uncomfortable realization. There's so much out there that's beyond your reach. What's the cost of this limitation? It means that every assumption you make about reality, every fact you hold dear, is based on a sliver of available information. And it's not enough. Here's the fun part. Your brain doesn't just see less than what's there. It changes what it does see based on context. Imagine Louis XIII's tapestry factory in Paris. The king's chemist, Michel Chevreul, noticed that noblemen were complaining about the vibrancy of the threads they bought. The threads looked dull at home, not like the vibrant ones on display. Chevreul, after years of tests, realized the problem wasn't the dyes, it was context. The colors seemed bright when woven together because of how human brains perceive contrast, not because the threads were any different. That same principle affects everything you see and hear. Context doesn't just influence your perception, it shapes it. If you're learning a new language, context affects what you hear. A native Japanese speaker, for instance, struggles with the difference between R and L sounds in English because those sounds aren't distinguished in Japanese. Your brain is trained by your experiences and it becomes hypersensitive to the distinctions that matter most to you, overlooking the ones that don't. And guess what? That makes every perception a collaboration between your past and the present moment. So, while you may think you're seeing the world as it is, you're really just seeing it through the distorted lens of your accumulated experiences, with context acting as an invisible puppeteer, pulling the strings behind every fact you perceive. Imagine a young boy named Ben Anderson riding his bike down the street, doing all the things a typical kid might do. Only, Ben is blind. At just three years old, he lost his sight to a rare form of cancer. But here's the twist that would blow Lotto's mind. Ben learned to see through echolocation. By clicking his tongue and listening for the sound waves that bounced back, Ben trained his brain to recognize the spatial layout of his surroundings without ever using his eyes. In Deviate, Lotto uses Ben's story to demonstrate just how adaptable the human brain can be. Your brains, believe it or not, are more like clay than concrete, and they mold themselves based on the sensory data they receive. Ben's sight is a testament to the brain's raw flexibility. Given the right stimuli, it can reshape its neural circuits to make sense of the world in ways you'd never expect. In Ben's case, sound became his vision. Your brain's capacity to rewire itself with new inputs is astounding but it also means that your perception is a product of whatever data it has learned to process, be it through sight, sound, or something else entirely. Ben's echolocation isn't some rare exception. It's a window into the boundless potential of the human mind when it's trained in unconventional ways. Neuroscience isn't just a collection of theories. It's an experimental playground, and in one famous study, 
scientists took two groups of rats and divided them into vastly different environments. One group got the luxury treatment, toys, new objects, stimulation galore. The other group got isolation and monotony with nothing but empty cages. A month later, their brains told very different stories. The rats in the enriched environment showed more developed brains, denser connections, more neural growth. The isolated rats? Their brains were duller, sparser, less equipped to deal with novel situations. Lotto shows us that humans aren't any different. Your brain, much like those of these lab rats, thrives on novelty. The more you interact with diverse, stimulating surroundings, the more your neural circuitry strengthens and grows. New experiences, new places, even new people, they all add layers to your brain's capacity to interpret and interact with reality. It's a potent reminder that learning doesn't just happen in classrooms. It happens every time you engage with your environment, allowing your brain to shape itself into something more resilient, more adaptable, and ultimately more perceptive. So, if you're living in mental isolation, do yourself a favor and start exploring the world. Your brain will thank you for it. The problem with brains is that they're stubborn, and once they learn a pattern, they stick to it. In Deviate, Lotto explores how these mental assumptions can become invisible prisons. Every experience you have wires your brain with shortcuts, assumptions, that make sense of the world around you. And while these assumptions are handy for quick thinking, they're also sticky, sometimes to the point of rigidity. Once your brain believes something, it's reluctant to let go. It's why habits are so hard to break, and why some people hold fast to their opinions, regardless of evidence to the contrary. It's as if each thought creates a path in your brain, a groove, and every repetition deepens that groove. Over time, these assumptions become part of how you interpret reality, blinding you to alternatives. They can shape everything you see and do, all while keeping you locked in a feedback loop of your own making. And guess what? This isn't just about bad habits or stubborn thinking. Assumptions can be useful. They help you navigate the world with speed and efficiency. But as Lotto points out, they're a double-edged sword, sharpening your mind's efficiency while dulling its flexibility. The real danger here is that, without awareness, your assumptions will limit your ability to see new possibilities and interpret situations objectively. Consider a spinning diamond. Look at it once and it spins right, look again and it goes left. It's a simple illusion, but it's a brilliant metaphor for how your internal states can hijack perception. Lotto dives into this phenomenon, showing that our perceptions are rarely pure or objective. Instead, they're tainted by biases we don't even realize we have. Emotions, background, economic status, all of these factors change what you see, feel, and experience. Studies have shown that poor children perceive coins as larger and more valuable than rich children do. Hills look steeper to tired hikers than to energized ones. These unconscious biases are embedded in the very framework of perception, influencing everything from how you interpret the color of a dress to the intentions behind a stranger's smile. If you're poor, stressed, tired, or anxious, your brain literally distorts reality in ways that reflect those states, creating a loop between perception and expectation. You're not just seeing the world, you're seeing your version of the world, filtered through the tinted lens of your biases. Lotto argues that by understanding these influences, you can start peeling back the layers of illusion. But let's face it, bias is the persistent ghost that haunts every interpretation, every belief, every fact you think you know. The Rosetta Stone was the key that unlocked ancient Egyptian language. But here's the thing, 
it wasn't an easy feat. Scholars struggled for years because they assumed hieroglyphs were pictorial symbols, whole words. Then along came Jean-Francois Champollion, who questioned that assumption. What if, he thought, hieroglyphs represented sounds rather than words? Suddenly the code unraveled, revealing the language beneath. This story isn't just about cracking hieroglyphs. It's a metaphor Lotto uses to show how questioning even the most basic assumptions can open up whole new ways of seeing. Creativity, as he sees it, is an act of rebellion against established beliefs, an exercise in flipping your assumptions on their heads. Think about how often you've been stumped by a problem, only to realize you were framing it all wrong. Take Dunker's candle problem. You're given a candle, matches, and a box of tacks, and asked to attach the candle to a wall. People get stuck because they assume the box can't be used. But challenge that assumption, and the solution appears. Tack the box to the wall as a platform for the candle. To truly innovate, Lotto argues, you must disrupt your own thinking, strip away old assumptions, and open your mind to possibilities that seem absurd or counterintuitive. This is the path to creativity, not by working within the rules, but by questioning the rules themselves. Imagine a bicycle that turns left when you turn the handlebars right. It sounds simple enough, but it's a kind of simple that absolutely shatters your instincts. Destin Sandlin, the engineer behind the backwards brain bike, proved that this small shift flips your mental script entirely. Experienced cyclists, the kind who can ride with no hands, couldn't even balance on this bike without extensive practice. And even after they mastered it, going back to a regular bike felt just as impossible. Lotto sees this experiment as the ultimate example of how hard it is to escape the grip of established thought patterns. Your brains are wired to seek comfort in the familiar, and learning new ways to think is like rewiring those circuits. It takes an enormous amount of mental effort. The backwards brain bike isn't just a novelty, it's a testament to the difficulty and the power of reshaping your perception, of rewiring how you interact with the world. Breaking free from familiar patterns isn't a natural instinct. It's an act of mental rebellion, one that can unlock creativity by forcing your brain into unexplored territory, even if the experience is disorienting at first. Embracing new perspectives is what gets you to innovation. But it's an uphill battle every time because your mind clings to old habits like a lifeboat. Humans are funny creatures, deeply curious, yet terrified of the unknown. Your ancestors roamed the savanna with the same battle raging in their brains, curiosity versus survival. And when it came down to it, sticking to the known won out. Those who ventured too far often met predators or barren landscapes, and those who played it safe lived long enough to pass on their genes. Lotto describes this as a deep-seated aversion to uncertainty, an instinct that still governs decision-making. You want to explore, but you fear the dark room, the possibility of what might be hiding just out of sight. This fear isn't just survival instinct, it's also a mental barrier that keeps you from trying new things, taking risks, and embracing unfamiliar experiences. In Deviate, Lotto challenges you to confront this aversion head-on, because ultimately, it's limiting. If you always stick with what's safe, you'll never experience the thrill of discovery, the new flavors, the insights that come only when you leave the light and step into the shadows. Sure, there's risk involved, but without that leap into the unknown, you'd still be stuck eating berries off the same bush forever. Creativity requires bravery, the courage to accept that you don't know what's out there, but you're willing to find out. And here's the ironic truth. If you can make peace with uncertainty, you unlock the doors to genuine creativity. 
Lotto argues that most of you humans don't even realize how quickly you fill in the gaps with assumptions. When a stranger bumps into you, you assume they're rude, not realizing it could be an accident. But what if, instead of reacting, you paused? A microsecond of hesitation can open up a world of interpretation. That stranger could be rushing to help someone. They could be distracted by a personal crisis. Lotto wants you to see that by pausing, by holding off on judgment, you're giving yourself permission to explore other possibilities. Creativity isn't just about making something new. It's about perceiving the world with fresh eyes. And to do that, you have to tolerate the discomfort of ambiguity. Those who cling to certainty miss out on creativity's greatest power, its unpredictability. When you allow yourself to not know, you make room for possibilities that are impossible in the strict world of right and wrong. It's a strange skill, living with uncertainty, but if you master it, you can rewire your perception entirely. The unknown stops being a threat and becomes a source of inspiration. In the Innovation Lab at University of California, Berkeley, scientists are studying cockroaches, not because they love creepy crawlies, but because these little creatures move with remarkable agility and speed. By observing them, researchers have managed to design Rex, a bionic robot capable of navigating combat zones. This is blue sky thinking at its finest, Lotto argues, where there's no fixed outcome in mind, just an open-ended curiosity. You see, real innovation doesn't come from goal-oriented thinking. It comes from exploration, from play. When you set a specific target, you've already limited the possibilities because every choice funnels you toward that end. In the cockroach lab, the researchers didn't know what they would discover. They just observed, experimented, and followed wherever curiosity led. This is Lotto's ultimate message. To truly innovate, you have to abandon the narrow path and embrace the chaos of curiosity. Blue sky thinking is a radical act, a refusal to let constraints dictate your mind. And in that act of playful exploration, of pure discovery, you get a taste of what it means to see the world with fresh eyes, unshackled by expectations. So here's where we end up. Reality, as you perceive it, is a carefully constructed illusion. Your brains edit, filter, and shape every piece of data you encounter, creating a world that's as much invention as observation. But as Deviate reveals, there's a way out of this mental maze. By embracing uncertainty, questioning your assumptions, and diving into experiences without preconceptions, you open up a new way of seeing, of engaging with the world around you. Lotto shows that the beauty of this open-minded exploration is that it expands your world. When you let curiosity lead the way, you break free from the limitations your brain has set, and you begin to see things not just as they appear, but as they could be. It's a creative liberation, a lifelong invitation to view the familiar with wonder and to find the extraordinary in the everyday. Living with curiosity isn't just a choice, it's a form of freedom. And there you have it, my curious-minded audience. Bo Lotto's book isn't just a science lesson, it's a wake-up call. Reality isn't fixed, it's flexible, it's up for interpretation, and it's yours to play with. The power to see the world differently lies within each of you. So next time you see something ordinary, pause. Question it. Play with your perception, because the more you look, the more you realize, reality is more than meets the eye. Thank you for diving down this rabbit hole with me. If this got you thinking, leave a comment, hit that like button, and as always, stay curious. Until next time.